Welcome to your November update on the Covidence UK study. Uh, my name is Professor Adrian Martineau and with me today is Hayley Holt, the Principal Investigator. Hayley. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. We had a really good month for recruitment. As you can see, we're approaching 20k participants um, for sign up. This makes our study very powerful um, and we have approximately 90% retention for our monthly follow up questionnaires. And please, guys, keep this up because this is really important for our ability to capture events and to detect modifiable risk factors for COVID-19. Thanks very much, Hayley. Um, so uh, many of you will be watching the uh, webinar for the first time, having uh, joined the study out of an interest in the Coronavit trial, uh, the UK's national trial of vitamin D to reduce severity and risk of COVID-19. Uh, we had a fantastic response to our call for expressions of interest with over 11,000 people writing to our email address, of whom uh, just about 3,000 have now been offered uh, vitamin D testing. Um, in addition, because of the popularity of that study and because we weren't able to uh, accommodate everyone in it, we're launching a new additional vitamin D study, which will involve uh, sending a finger prick test for vitamin D uh, in the post. And those who have low vitamin D levels will be offered uh, supplements at no cost. You will remember that the monthly questionnaire for October was the first to contain a series of more detailed questions about long COVID, uh, so-called long COVID namely uh, prolonged uh, symptoms of COVID lasting four weeks or more after the initial infection. Um, I'll just bring you some quick results from that. In response to the question, would you say that you currently have long COVID? We've got the following answer, that uh, around 5.8% of participants answered yes to that, uh, with 87.9% answering no, and 6.4% uh, of the 10,000 people who answered that question uh, don't know or not sure. Now, we know from the uh, algorithm developed by the uh, Zoe investigators that around 10% of COVID in UK probably had COVID-19. Um, so if 5% have had long COVID and 10% have had probable COVID-19, that suggests that as many as half of people who get COVID uh, end up with prolonged symptoms. Now, this estimate is uh, very significantly higher than that reported from other studies, which reports a 5 to 10% risk. In order to investigate this, we really need to get around the problem that our case definition of probable COVID-19 is based on reported symptoms, which is rather imprecise. What we need is a test uh, to determine who's had infection and who hasn't with much greater specificity. Um, a conventional approach to doing this is antigen testing, where a swab is taken and tested for the coronavirus itself. However, this is limited by its availability and also by timing. The swab had to be done uh, within the early stages of disease if it's to stand a good chance of detecting the virus. An alternative approach to detecting whether or not somebody's had SARS-CoV-2 antibody virus that the body or the immune system has a memory of the virus. Now there's been some evidence to suggest that this memory response may wane in some people but it is well, well preserved in most people and antibody testing represents a good way to get some objective evidence about whether or not somebody has encountered the uh, coronavirus. So we've been very fortunate in getting generous funding from the Fisher Family Trust to support a study looking at antibody responses in some 10,000 COVID UK participants. Uh, this is in collaboration with Professor Alex Richter at the University of Birmingham, who's developed a very nice antibody assay that can be done on samples taken from a finger prick of blood that can be sent through the post. And you can see here that this assay has a very low rate of false positivity, 0.7%, a low rate of positivity as well, around 3.7%. And there's evidence that we are uh, getting ready to send out these materials to you. Uh, there's a picture of the uh, taking delivery of uh, the materials that will be coming through the post to you in the weeks ahead. My colleague, Professor Aziz Sheikh at the Usher Institute, Edinburgh University, has also launched a treatment study for early COVID-19. And I caught up with him earlier in the week to ask him some questions about it. Could a water solution help to reduce early symptoms and progression of COVID-19? Uh, my colleague and covid UK uh, principal investigator, Professor Aziz Sheikh, is director of the Usher Institute at Edinburgh University, and he's running the Elvis COVID-19 study, which aims to answer this question. Um, Aziz, thanks for joining us. Um, could you explain why you think salt water 
nasal washouts and gargling might help with COVID-19? Yeah, so hi Adrian, thanks for having me. Um, so this is a, um, a, an ancient uh, Indian remedy that, which goes back hundreds of years um, where people have used um, salt water, nasal washing and gargling to deal with infections. And so a couple of years ago, we did a trial in the context of people with um, upper respiratory tract infections or the common cold. And what we found was that um, using uh, homemade salt water preparations and gargling and washing the nose out regularly with this uh, improved symptoms, it reduced the risk of others developing um, um, infections in the household. And it also reduced the need um, for uh, um, over-the-counter remedies. What we then did was did a, um, a separate analysis, which was in a subsample of those who had other forms of coronavirus. And we found that um, this um, treatment seemed to work in those with other forms of coronavirus as well. Hence, we're uh, interested in seeing whether this works with the particular coronavirus that causes COVID-19. Thanks very much. And uh, can you tell us uh, what the trial involved? So what we're looking for is uh, adults um, who've um, got symptoms which are suggestive of COVID-19 or they've got confirmed disease on the basis of uh, tests and within 48 hours of onset. And so we're looking really at identifying people very early on in, the, uh, in their illness. We then uh, instruct them on how to make this solution at home. It's actually very, very simple. Simply just involves dissolving some salt in warm water. Uh, and then they are randomised to either um, routine um, care or uh, to the intervention, which involves washing out their nose um, and gargling with this solution several times a day until they're better. OK, and so how would people sign up if they developed uh, symptoms? Because I'm guessing they need to sign up quite soon after becoming symptomatic. Yes, yeah, so what we're, th this is all done um, remotely, so it, there is a uh, a web link to sign up and we'll share that link uh, um, with uh, um, participants on Covidence. Um, and, and, um, and then everything is done remotely. So we, we handle this all through the Elvis COVID trial website. So it's actually a very straightforward process. OK, so uh, the link uh, is on your screens now. And if you develop symptoms of COVID-19 and you'd like to join this safe uh, uh, trial looking at a, a cheap and inexpensive way to ameliorate symptoms, please do sign up. Aziz, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks so much. If in the months ahead you develop symptoms of COVID-19, uh, please remember the Elvis COVID-19 study and uh, sign up within two days of developing symptoms to see if uh, saline solution can reduce the severity of the illness. In summary then, Recruitment targets for Covidence UK have been exceeded and follow-up remains high. We have several new studies in the pipeline, so please keep an eye out for email invitations to these. Please also continue to complete our monthly follow-up questionnaires as these are so important for capturing incident COVID-19. And remember that we have plenty of reasons to be optimistic moving towards Christmas and the new year, as the Pfizer vaccine has been reported to have over 90% protective efficacy. And as that is rolled out across the UK, Covidence UK will be perfectly placed to capture evidence on its efficacy and to look at active responses from the vaccine last. And so that brings to an end our webinar for this November. Thank you for watching and thank you for taking part in Covidence UK. Until our next webinar in December, goodbye. Bye.